Don Valley Stadium BTA meeting and I'm here with Tony Remington and uh, I first encountered Tony at the Welsh show this year, uh, 2012, uh, where I bought a, a beautiful uh, blue-green glazed uh, cascade pot for my uh, Pruna Spinosa, the one that goes with the barbed wire. And uh, anyway, here's Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. And you've been exhibiting here at BTA and there's been some good crowds. Um, how long have you uh, been working in bonsai pots? Bonsai pots for about eight, nine years. And what made, why did you start? What, 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 was, the, what was the trigger? The, the trigger for making it, I actually, I've been teaching pottery since about 1978, 1980. And I ran my own pottery where I made studio wear and domestic wear. Stuff that people could use in and around the house. And then I stopped making pots for a few years, wanted to get back into it. Always had an interest in bonsai, always had an interest in bonsai pots that we made, the occasional one. But really went into it full time about eight years ago. I'm also really interested in bonsai pots and the bonsai shapes and the things that you can do with the glazes. Yeah, I think, I think one of the interesting things, certainly over the last so 20 years, potters have been getting more adventurous in their in their way. A You've little got, less traditional, maybe. Yeah, well, let's have a look at the yeah. pot that you brought with this you. This is a pot that I brought along. This is a porcelain crack pot. A crack pot? It, well, it's what I call a crack pot. I mean, people call them different things. It's a, uh, a snake a skin pot. OK. But this is, this is porcelain decorated with sort of iron oxides. So the body is pure porcelain? The body is pure 24 karat porcelain. And that's fine frost, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah, OK? Yeah, it's, it's fully vitrified clay, so it can sort of take frost conditions. Okay, that's great. I mean, I mean, would you make a very large pot in porcelain or not? Or you, you keep them? Porcelain is a little bit like throwing putty. It's not the nicest clay to use. In fact, if you use bone china, which is like a, a refined porcelain, that is like using custard. Well, I re I, yeah. Well, I remember one of the, the great craft potters who worked in porcelain was Lucy Ree. Lucy Ree was one of my favourites. Yeah. Absolute star. Fantastic yeah, work yeah, that yeah, she yeah. was uh, yeah. that she was yeah. doing, very very yeah. fine and refined. Right. And really, that's how I see porcelain. I see porcelain as being a, a delicate, refined, almost well, a, a definitely translucent material. So to see it as a bonsai pot is a, a little unusual. Doesn't need to be refined. Doesn't need to be refined. You think about sort of electrical conductors, porcelain. You think about the big electrical conductors, porcelain. It's a very very industrial clay. It can be used fine. It can be used for sort of more. Basic use. More robust use. More okay, robust so uses. tell us about your firing and anything in particular that, 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 that you're doing that's exciting you at the moment. I fire, I fire electric in a quite a small kiln in my shed, which is, <laughs> which I like to think is uh, big enough, but it's not. I'm always getting requests for pots that are bigger than, than I can actually make. I find the sort of size limitations a little bit, a little bit of a worry, but there's nothing I can do about that. I can't get a bigger pot in my shed. A bigger kiln in my shed, so... Well, leave the bigger pots to the other, other leave potters. Leave the bigger there. pots to the other people. And maybe pots also tend to be round, because I throw them on the wheel, oval occasionally, but, but mainly round. There's one thing I've noticed, certainly with looking at your stand, and it is this, is that your attention to detail, and in particular your feet, are <laughs> what, if you'll excuse the pun, stand out. Yeah. You know, they stand out, uh, and that's, that's something I like, because I think, certainly as artists, what we are doing now is we're being far more particular in our request for what we want in a pot. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. And, <laughs> and I think... Yeah. I think to, to the point of sort of obsession sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I can understand that, because, yeah. you know, if I've spent 20 years on exactly. a tree, exactly. the last thing I'm exactly. going to do is be slapdash exactly. oh, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. about, my, about my pot. But, but then again, I've got the same level of obsession about use of the feet. I want to make sure that the feet are right. I want to make sure that the pot's right before it leaves, before it leaves my studio. I've got quite high... I mean, my wife says that I'm just too much of a perfectionist and I'll not let anything go. But that's just the way I that's am. That's the way it is. Yeah, well, yeah. But, but I, yeah, I think um, certainly the pot that I bought from you, the moment I saw it, I knew it was right. Right. Uh, and, and that's rare. Yeah. Because I'm not a, a guy who, who just buys pots. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, my wife is not a pot widow. We, we yeah. haven't got pots all over the house. Yeah. I, I, 
99 times out of 100 I will commission a pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was, it was quite a joy for me to find one yeah. that, that you had which was, was exactly right. And, it's the, and you will see that tree potted in Tony's pot um, next year, hopefully after Nolanders. So anyway, listen, Tony, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks for your time as well. Yeah, it's been quite interesting. <laughs> Good to talk to you. All right.